Frank Watkins again, and today I'm going to be talking about the definitive saucer trade. Now, once again, I'm going to rely on my experience since reading Edwards and McGee's book. Bear in mind that the first edition of their very, very important book was written in 1948, long before computers and the internet. So the focus was distinctly on pattern recognition rather than computer indicators. I see that very little has actually changed. Today's computer indicators may give you confirmation signals, but the real truth of any stock is in the price. Just remember that price is a measure of value, whereas volume is a measure of emotion. So given the price and the volume, I can pretty much determine everything I need to know from those two factors. Now, again, I refer to Edwards and McGee. Here's a case in question, case from 1932 and Edwards and McGee's saucer and the similarities between an Australian stock, Beach Petroleum, between 18 sorry, between April and September 2017. The similarities are quite obvious. Now, why trade a saucer formation? As with most patterns, the saucer is quite easily detected. It's extremely reliable and a great method of acquiring stock near historic low prices. Saucer formations are generally seen as bottoming formations, so you need to find sources that are at an obvious long-term low rather than a saucer that is you know, mid-move or halfway through uh, a rally. Just out of interest's sake, the uh, source of formation back in Edwards and McGee's book was also known as a dormant bottom, but more recently the name cup and handle has, um, let's say, been popularised to a certain degree. The formation um, takes a while for these things to form, but they're very easy to pick up once the stock has started to rally again. Generally, you get a very clear picture of being able to draw a resistance line across two levels of data. Normally, a resistance line requires three or four touches of resistance, but for the saucer, uh, two touches are sufficient. Also, there needs to be a distinct bottom there's no point having two lows at the same point or even three, a double or a triple bottom. You would trade those quite differently. With a typical saucer, and we have here uh, BPT again, there's quite often various different buy signals before the actual completion of a saucer. We can see here where we have a higher, 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 low situation. We also have a smaller saucer within the larger saucer. It can be argued that entry can be made uh, at either of these levels and then uh, add to a position when you see the saucer and finally get the breakout. Now, the main thing with sources, as with a lot of other um, patterns, is the fact that you can measure your profit target. Looking at BPT, we had here a low and a, a distinct longer term low at 55 cents. The high point where the resistance line is drawn is at 80 cents, giving you a pattern depth of 25 cents. 
So your, pro your profit target is derived from adding that 25 cents to the resistance line. In other words, a profit target of a dollar five. Now, you may uh, quite rightly choose to place your profit target at a dollar four instead of a dollar five, and that would make sense to me. You want to be out of this stock before other people are selling. The other thing back on the entry of these patterns, whether or not to buy the breakout or buy the retracement to the breakout, or as this formation here is called, this could be the handle on the cup or the saucer. So personally, I buy the breakout. If it retraces, well and good. And if it then takes out the previous high close, I might even add to that position before reaching the actual profit target. So there's plenty of scope for just changing entry point, adding to positions and so on and so forth. The more sources you trade, the more you will ultimately come to your own conclusions on how to trade them. Now, the next feature is the timing is, uh, sorry, the order placement and market depth and contingent orders. In the case of BPT, the orders would read as follow. Your entry would be to buy X number of BPT at 80 and a half cents. That is one tick above the resistance line. Your stop loss placement on this particular trade is very subjective as there is no prominent data point under which to place a stop. My method of handling this situation would be to use one third of the profit target as a stop. Profit target being 25 cents, a third of that is about 8 cents. So I would place my stop at around 71, 72 cents. And as I've mentioned, profit target at $1.4, $1.5. Once again, to time your entry um, and, and be really very precise in your timing, you need to look at market depth. Once you've recognized the appropriate pattern, check the market depth. And as soon as you see twice as many buyers as sellers, wanting twice as much stock as what is offered, that's the time to place your contingent order. Now, targeting alternatives. The First thing I'd suggest is that when you first start trading, you should place your profit target and sell all your stock. Now, invariably, if you do that once or twice, you will notice that after you exit the stock, the prices may continue uh, a lot further. So having seen this and being familiar with them, um, trading sources, then you may choose to, let's say, sell half of your holding at the profit target and let the other half run, particularly in a bull market. My final tip on sources is that once you've worked out your entry, your stop, and any profit, take it, take profit target, only take trades that offer a three to one profit loss ratio. So if you measure your profit target to be $1, don't risk any more than 33 cents. It's my belief that if you identify and trade seven out of 10 successful trades, and you do that with a three to one profit loss ratio, you should do very well. And finally, some examples of sources here. The first source on the top left had potentially two entries. The code here is SHV. Profit target was met on the first saucer entry. Then it formed the second saucer, but still hasn't broken through 
and actually given an entry price. Below that we have a stock IMC and again this stock broke out, it retraced a bit, it actually went under the breakout but then gapped up and within moments gave you your profit target. The stock on the top right as at the 3rd of August 2019 is a code MEI and to my mind the saucer is still forming. We can see that on balance volume is following the shape of the saucer as is volume. So keep an eye on MEI later on and just see how it unfolded. Below that is Silver Lake Resources, SLK, and again, very clear saucer. And uh, the only difference with this one, it did take a while for the profit target to be reached. Good luck and good trading.